can see the little fishies in there. Swimming, swimming. Keep on swimming, swimming. Swimming, swimming. Keep on swimming, swimming. Okay, I already love rock tea, but I think my, ex my whole experience with rock tea will be forever altered by this trip. This is just amazing. The terroir is stunning, but just the experience of being amongst these rocks and canyons is amazing. What do you think, babe? Is this awesome or what? Oh, it's awesome. The, where we are right now is called the Zhang Tang Jian, the longest uh, alley, uh, Brooklyn Alley in, uh, in the Wuyi. <laughs> Somebody went by with an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> So we just exited a really narrow slot cave full of bats, really fun. And now we're heading down back to the main trail on these uh, steep steps. What a great park. You should go first because you will be being how narrow it is. I'm the fattest, right? No, 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 you will see. Okay. Okay, we're going through the narrowest part here. I don't even know if I can fit. I've got a backpack on. They said it's 30, 30 centimeters. I've got my shoulders tilted sort of one. My right one is more forward. My left one is behind because I can't turn sideways because of the backpack. Very narrow. I'm getting a little bit wet because it's crooked. So I had to get rid of my backpack because I'm too fat, but I can fit through here if I kind of twist myself sideways. So up I go. I hope it's a good view at the top. What if somebody comes behind me? I don't like that idea. I'm not going to think about that anymore. All right, I'm filming again. I can hear some bats chirping. Is that open? It's open up up here. It's really wide again. All right, I'm going back down now. I'm going to join up with the ladies. I just climbed up out of this really narrow cave. So hopefully you'll get a chance to see. Here comes Jen out of the cave. I'll grab the backpack, baby. No, I cannot put that on. It's too narrow. It's too narrow, right? Yeah. We came through a spot that was literally, they weren't kidding, 30 centimeters thick. It was too dark to film though. Oh, the bat, there's bats oh, over God. there. Can you see them again? So many of them. Yeah, they're I'll chirping. They're not flying right now, but oh, you can you see, see their see wings. The wings? Their wings are flapping. Oh, and there you can see a row of them laying there. Yeah. Oh, there's so many of them. I hope you can see that. Ooh. Some of them flying. And there's about uh, at least a dozen on the wall, the side of the wall. Holy, I got hit by a trip. Hannah, all right. That's steep, huh? All right, and this is the last, the last little bit of steps here. We'll climb up and out. It's very steep, very narrow. This is quite wide compared to where we just were though. Suddenly I feel so spacious. Right, so comfy. That was pretty uncomfy. Like, I mean like a soul. It's not a, like. Don't crash and don't know what's in the future kind of thing. That's right. Don't know if we're gonna keep going for 10 kg. 10 kilometers, or if that's short. For me, once I thought about China crowds, I got really nervous. I can't, I don't mind that, but if there's people in front of him behind me, I get really uncomfy. Like Angel's Landing with all the people around, that was the problem, the people, not the steep. Right. <sighs> all right, so we made it out. Super cool, really steep. A really steep climb, very narrow passage, full of bats. We saw at least a dozen bats, but they didn't bother us at all, thank heavens. They were just off to the side having their fun. And uh, yeah, that was very cool. 
So if you're a little bit claustrophobic and that slot canyon doesn't interest you, there's a, an alternate route that's much more open and we're on it to return. The narrow canyon is strictly one way, thank God. So this is the alternate route, again, not through the canyon, but just look at this. So this is a sunny day in Wuyi, so we've got some uh, gray clouds and sun breaking through, and it's gorgeous. You can see there's some caves carved out of the uh, granite, I guess by wind and rain and just nature. I don't know, it's just beautiful here. Wow. So we're back on the trail. More tea gardens, more stunning views. We just walked through some really uh, old bush area and look in the back behind this, this new tea garden here. There's some really old bush there. Stunning. It's always hard to appreciate on camera, but just look at the pitch, how steep that uh, walk up the side of the tea garden is for those short little rows of tea bushes. But every inch of terroir here counts. And look at how the tea bushes are kind of tucked under that rock to the, to the right of the screen there. It's rock and to the left is the trail straight up that hillside. And they've actually got moss covered rocks holding the uh, each embankment in place, which you don't always see. It's usually just rock clay, but they probably want to mitigate erosion just beautiful and that's sitting right under whoop, that bad boy and then suddenly we're under this waterfall just beautiful here coming down and dripping down the granite let's go check it out see if it goes into a brook or something So those old tree bushes there across beside those steps, they have the water coming, dripping down along the granite or coming seeping out of the granite to nourish them. So they have a, that's an impact on their flavor. Oh, here we go. Let's go over. And here's another example of the water uh, running down the granite into the earth. So this is part of what makes up the unique terroir is this water seeping through the rock or down the rock constantly. Ooh, and look at this waterfall here. And there's more. Gushing out of the crack in the rock. Oh, look at this. Just surrounded by these, these uh, waterfalls pouring over the rock face. Makes for such a beautiful effect. The air smells so clear. It's pretty hot here, quite sunny. We got beautiful weather today. Look at that, into the pond. And over here is the other one. coming out of that crack, flowing down here. Oh, it's so cool here. Oh, it just got a lot cooler, a little bit of shade and the water flowing and all the moss. Reminds me of uh, Tianmu when we were going through that grotto to get to the, uh, to get to that hidden village. So much cooler. So here's an interesting situation where the brook is running right under this giant stone called the Water Pillow Stone. Don't ask. I don't know. Ooh! A giant butterfly just came by. I hope you got a chance to see that. Oh, yeah. Wild lilies. Giant wild lilies. They seem to love the shade. Jen pointed out earlier that when we came through the canyon, they were all growing on the shade side and none were growing on the sun side. 
So one thing you'll find yourself doing a lot at Wuyi is looking up. I looked up at this canyon and there's some sort of structure spilled into the wall of the cave. I have no idea what that's about. I'm going to go ask the boss and see what she says. Let's just do it. So we just stop for a short break and I'll show you what you get when you stop for a break in Wuyi National Conservation Area. You get this kind of view. Not too shabby for a little break. And right behind us is an old historic place where people used to live. Can you believe that? Pretty steep. Just crossed another little bridge into this wonderful little garden of crazy tea trees. There's Jen, you can see they're taller than her head. Tall and old. And here the stream behind me, the, the environment here is amazing. A little bit of litter here and there. So here we have some tea and these really broadleaf plants which really give me that tropical jungle feeling. It looks like a banana plant. It looks like banana or something, very tropical. As a Canadian I never see stuff like that. That's when I know I'm someplace hot. And then in the background, boom. Tea, banana, and view. So we've arrived at uh, Huiyuan Temple, which means we're getting close to the terroir of Huiyuan Kung. So that's pretty exciting. A few years ago, Jem was here and they were allowed to go in the temple, but now it's unfortunately been condemned. I guess they're going to, hopefully they'll do some renovations. Away we go, on the trail in Wu Yi. Oh yeah. All right, up we go to the tea garden at Huiyuan Kung. Let's check it out. Wait a sec, those are veggies. I got tricked. All right, we're at the veggie garden at Huiyuan Kung. These are authentic Huiyuan Kung long beans. Huiyuan Kung Tudo. Mmm, those must be delicious veggies. Okay, now we're starting to see some tea just beyond the temple. Some old bushes down by the stream. Again, we're in somewhat of a valley. A little hill, a slight rise to the right, and a steep cliff to the left, providing plenty of shade but some sun, you know, plenty of sun as well, a nice balance. Lots of great water. Some more big old bushes in Huiyuan Kung. Just a beautiful area. So I asked Jen a question on the way here before we even got to China about uh, a terroir and processing, right? So you've got this wee terroir around us, this prime, prime terroir for the top rock tea. But as as you know, like processing is really the most important thing. If I if I was to process this tea, it would be awful. It would be terrible rock tea, guaranteed. So, but what she said was kind of obvious. I said, well, what, so how do they make sure this tea is good? And she's like, well, this is a super famous area. Nobody who sucks at processing can get their hands on this material. And I was like, duh. Okay. So that's how, well, why Rui rock tea, you know, it's still the processing that makes it impeccable, plus the terroir. It all adds up to make a great tea. Just exhilarating. Every corner you turn is another magic moment. So we were just in an area back here where we noted that it suddenly went from feeling like a rocky environment to more of like a jungle walk, really enclosed by the jungle. Oh, nice. Jen Lee's thinking about diving in. Not too deep though. Now we're back in this rocky crevice with this gorgeous bridge that crisscrosses over the river over the little brook that runs by here. And it's much cooler again and fresh. I got to admit, I'm getting pretty tired. There's been a lot of up and down and uh, climbing stairs and uh, climbing hills. And it's just super exciting, but it is tiring and it's fun. I'm definitely looking forward to a tea and a beer. 
got to give you some sense of this, uh, this wonderful, magical walk through this canyon now. This is actually the main path here. It's getting narrow. Not as narrow as the cave we were in at all, but something like that. This is Tien. That's right. So we're at uh, Liuxiang Jiang, and it's another perfect example, much easier to show you what a Jiang is than to try and explain it. It's this kind of brook that runs in a very narrow valley. It has to be narrow. It can't be a brook in a wide valley. It can't be a, a whole bunch of land. This is a jiang. Okay, now you know. So we were about 480 meters from the Dahong Pao Gate, and we decided to add a 3K extension onto our trip. So uh, now we're down to about a half a bottle of water, which is actually tea. We made tea before we left. And we got to ration it. So what we're going to do when we feel thirsty is pluck a tea bud and have that to make our mouth nice and watery and juicy. Unless we're really thirsty, and then we'll have a little sip. We're on water ration now. This is getting real. So we're just starting out on our 3K extension, going through a beautiful tea garden. The road here is narrower. So there are these moments in Wuyish, in Wuyishan, where you're just all alone with the tea bushes and your family. We came a little bit off, I don't want to say it's off the beaten path because I don't really know, but we came to Daoshui Valley. It's a gorgeous terroir, very expensive tea from here because it's a prime location. But what I want to point out is how peaceful it is. It's just me, Jian Li, and Jen, and all of this tea in this gorgeous, picturesque environment. And it's quiet and peaceful, except for me, blah, blah, blah. And that bug in front of the screen, how bizarre. Watch out. Everybody be careful. We've seen a few of these salamander things along the way, and I've tried to get some of them in slow mo because they're exceedingly fast when they move, but you throw stuff at them and they're not actually that afraid. So I'm getting out of here. I speak bird and chicken. So this is still Daoshui Ken, very peaceful, except us, I don't hear any other people at all. And the valley is like super high and tall with the wild lily there. And wild strawberry, my mom spotted some wild strawberry. I'm just spinning because I want to show those beautiful little wild lilies. On the I'm going for strawberries. Cliff. And Phil is going for strawberries. Same here. And for more. 
Okay, it turns out we couldn't reach the strawberries. And he's not happy. <laughs> eat it, eat it. How is it? Not bad. Look at where he is. Crazy butt. So how are you going to get up? Okay, it works. <laughs> so this whole garden is slowly rising and right here this giant rock splits off this little separate section here. And we just came up from this valley back here which is all full of tea. So these little guys are doing something the trail is like all the way down to where Jen is. This oh. is the beginning. Way down there. Look how busy they are. So the rain jackets are out. We're getting what seems to be hopefully a brief afternoon shower. But the sky does look pretty ominous. We've all, uh, it's a little bit too hot to like close the jacket, but we got the hoods on and we got the jackets on. So that's how we're rolling now for a bit. So we're in another terroir now. We just uh, passed a temple. We're in Yolan. It started to have an afternoon shower now. And it's really beautiful around here. See, we got a rain jackets out. Oh, it's refreshingly cool here by the stream and in the shade. You see all those old tea bushes back there, right beside this moving stream. Perfect. So some of the shots I took were in this little valley. I thought that might be the be that was just the beginning. As we come around the corner, as we come around the corner, we see it's another terroir, gorgeous terroir with cliffs on either side and tea down the middle. Amazing environment for tea during this mid-afternoon shower. Look up here. I'm holding the camera really tight to my body because it's just pouring here, but I just want you to see this because it's quite an experience. You know, it, it may seem like it's not ideal, but it's really magical. It's just pouring rain. Like it's not quite a thunderstorm, but it feels like it. And we're here in uh, Nuelan. Uh, terroir and it's just amazing. I'm gonna put the camera away. I don't want to break it. There's Jian Li. This is magical. Look at the water starting to rush down the cliff face. This is gonna just totally ramp up all the uh, waterfalls and stuff. Here comes Jen. We're gonna get soaking wet. <laughs> so we are at the place called the Bukhe Si which means unbelievable and it was indeed unbelievable with how hard the raindrops were. So as if we wasn't enough of a life experience, we just got an afternoon downpour and made it a totally memorable, life-changing, like everything is so beautiful after a fresh rain. We're here with our raincoats on. We're in the valley called Bukutsi, which means unbelievable. I see that. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll bring that in. It's just amazing. And we're okay, go. watch this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're having a great time. You, something so good you didn't think it could get better and it got better. So this was the path. It's actually stopped raining now. And where Jen is walking where it's a little bit not soaked was actually full of water. Alright, here comes Jenny. You can go by if you want. I don't know, maybe I'm in the way too much. We're just going to squeeze by this puddle. Try to keep our feet dry. It's not like they're dry at all, actually, so I don't see how it matters. Squeezing by this puddle here. I gotta just hang on to the tea bush to get by. And I'm through. 
join up with Jen. Pink and blue, together at last. That you go through. You can see the trail is pretty wet and we're walking carefully. It's not too slippery, but nobody wants to fall. And it is pretty mossy here, so we gotta make sure we keep the shiny side up. We're just passing this little cave. And because of the fresh rain, I think the raging brook sounds almost like an ocean in here. Just wandered off a little bit and I saw this shelter here. There's a little cave on the way up to Pluck. Let's go in. Ooh, really cool. Wish we had been able to find this place a while ago when it rained, but we had a great time. But that's probably what they use it for. Let's head back. We just got out of the uh, the uh, Bui San, the main park area. We got rained on there. It was a magic moment. Yeah. Just as we arrived at the bus stop, the sky opened up again. So a lot better. We're not getting soaked a second time. Yeah. But the what? rain is pouring. We couldn't see anything, and we actually got some footage of the lightning so far in the mountain area. Hopefully, Hopefully we captured the actual lightning. <laughs> All right. I'm just shooting this to see if I can catch. A little bit of uh, lightning on the camera. We've had two flashes so far. Oh, I might have it right in the center of the camera. I'm getting misted there. The mountains are gone. <laughs> 